Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. Hundreds of St. Lucians to benefit from a major component of government's socio economic program for the nation. St. Lucia's teachers hailed for their dedication amid the challenges of COVID 19. And the Caribbean Court of Justice court term opens for the 2021 2022. Hundreds of St. Lucians are to benefit from a major component of government's socio economic program for the nation. The Department of Housing and Local Government on Wednesday, 6 October 2021, launched the National Housing Assistance Program, which will provide proper housing for the vulnerable and indigent. The National Housing Assistance Program aims to ensure that lower income earners and the most vulnerable amongst the population have access to adequate housing. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Housing and Local Government, Dr. Cadelia Ambrose, indicated that the department has been inundated with requests for housing assistance from the very low to the low income population. It is for this reason she explained that the ministry felt it imperative that the intervention be made. The activities under the NHAP are structured for implementation as follows. The identification and creation of an inventory of households with the most urgent housing needs. Assessments and ranking of this in priority of urgency. Designing of assistance packages most suited to the housing needs of identified households. Disbursement of assistance packages in the form of technical assistance, building materials, and or labor grants monitoring and evaluating of the program. Thus, it is envisaged that through the NHAP initiative, some measure of relief, poverty reduction, empowerment, and overall enhancement to the socioeconomic well-being of many across St. Lucia will be achieved. Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister with Responsibility for Housing and Local Government, Honorable Richard Frederick, clarified the criteria under which individuals would be eligible for assistance. Those seeking assistance would have to satisfy a list of criteria. Houses, households who live in inhumane conditions, low-income generating households, persons affected by natural and man-made disasters, the elderly, the elderly, those who fall within the poverty group, the homeless, and those who are dis disabled with such disability preventing them from entering the workforce. I need to pause here a second to disclose this caveat. Persons who are in illegal occupation of land would not have access to this program unless the owner of the land gives permission to effect repairs on that house. I want to repeat this. Persons who are in illegal occupation of land will not be able to access this assistance unless the owners of the land give permission. We don't want a situation where just having refurbished a house, the owner of the land says, boom, we don't want that kind of situation. So we have the establishment of a project team to oversee the implementation of the program. Households will be identified using various tools, including the priority means test. And where it is absolutely necessary absolutely necessary houses will be reconstructed. The program is being funded via a loan from the Import Export Bank of the Republic of China, Taiwan to the tune of $10 million. Four million U.S. dollars of the loan will be spent on the National Housing Assistance Program. Ambassador of Taiwan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Shen, reaffirmed Taiwan's commitment to assisting in the development of St. Lucia. As a staunch development partner of St. Lucia, Taiwan has over the years participated in the national development of Fair Helen by sharing expertise 
and providing assistance in the fields of agriculture, education, healthcare, digital access, ICT, community development, and so on. By providing a soft commercial loan facilities to finance the housing assistance program, the Export and Import Bank in Taiwan will help bring many disadvantaged families in St. Lucia one step closer to having a safe heaven where they can love and to be loved. Together, we can achieve more. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Development and the Youth Economy, the Honorable Philip J. Pierre, explained that the loan was repurposed to address the more urgent needs of the vulnerable. We are launching that program, $10 million. And I can tell you is that the initial thinking of that program was not to see about housing for indigenous and poor people. That, that is a fact. It was meant to do other things. Other things that are important, but it was not meant for that program. It took the cabinet through the minister to convince the Taiwanese and the other officials that a more immediate need was to repair the houses of people in this country. So whereas what we wanted to do, what the money was initially aimed at doing, was to improve the infrastructure in, in a certain area. Needed. Needed. Because I said before, it's a matter of inclusion. Needed. But we sought the immediate, the immediate needs were the poor and the underprivileged and the indigent. Minister for Equity, Social Justice and Empowerment, Honorable Joachim Henry, pledging his support to the program, indicated that it was very timely and will go a long way in assisting those in dire need. It is my belief that in promoting and securing social justice and acknowledging the fundamentals of human rights of our people, poverty and vulnerability reduction programs must consider the provision of safe and secure place to reside. Therefore, as WHO Commission on Social Determinants of Health has stated, access to quality housing is necessary for implement in securing social justice and health equity and that access to quality housing and shelter and clean water and sanitation are human rights and basic needs for a healthy living. And as I believe healthy living at the individual of household levels will translate into healthy communities and ultimately a healthy nation. The National Housing Assistance Program was officially launched on the 6th of October 2021. St. Lucia's teachers have been hailed for their dedication amid the challenging effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Minister for Education Honorable Sean Edward recognized the contribution of educators as the ministry observed World Teachers Day. More from Homer DeMarc. The government of St. Lucia joined the rest of the world in observing World Teachers Day 2021. The observance highlights the contribution of educators to national and societal development. This year's theme, Teachers at the Heart of Education Recovery, focused on the pertinent role of educators in recovery efforts from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Minister for Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training, Honorable Sean Edward noted the commitment of St. Lucian teachers to their students despite the challenges brought on by the pandemic. For us in the education system, we at the level of the ministry, we continue to find the resources, make the resources available, ensure that, that we create that enabling environment for our children to learn. Um, the St. Lucia Teachers Union has played its part, central government has played its part, but very, very critical to any effort, serious effort at recovery, is the role and the disposition of our teachers. And I really must take the opportunity to thank the hundreds of teachers in this country who have always put themselves on the line for our children. Um, we cannot overemphasize the importance of the role that teachers play in nation building. And as the Minister for Education, I just want to take the opportunity on behalf of the Honorable Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre 
my colleagues in the cabinet, um, the senior management team of the Ministry of Education to tell the teachers of this country how much we appreciate the effort that they make, particularly in, in, in during the period of the pandemic. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training, Senator Honorable Dr. Pauline Antoine Prosper also paid tribute to St. Lucian educators on Tuesday. Acting Chief Education Officer in the Ministry of Education, Sarah Sipal, commended teachers on their resolve and dedication to education and nation building. I would like to thank you so much for all the sacrifices that you have made during this pandemic. We appreciate and we value your effort. And we know that teachers right now, they are feeling the pain of these children who they do not have right now face to face to guide them through the process. We do understand that teachers and this is the commitment that we know you have. So to all the teachers and educators, what you serve as a mother, a father, you serve as um, um, a lawyer, you serve as the social worker, you serve as the motivator, you, you just serve in your different capacities. We say again, congratulations to you, celebrate and continue to give of your best. World Teachers Day is observed annually on October 5. From the Government Information Service, Thomedi Mack reporting. As the Caribbean Court of Justice's 2021-2022 court term opened on Monday, 4th October 2021, the court president, the Honorable Mr. Justice Adrian Saunders, issued a message that highlighted the work of the court for the 2020-2021 year and how the work of the CCJ impacts citizens of the Caribbean community. President Saunders noted that the CCJ, like other institutions, has had to adapt due to the challenges created by the COVID-19 pandemic. However, the institution has continued to serve the people of the Caribbean, particularly on matters related to the Caribbean Single Market Economy, CSME, freedom of movement of labor, goods, services, capital and establishment. Over the last year, notwithstanding the severe effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on countries, institutions, and people in general, the court was nevertheless able to function effectively using our digital machinery to execute our mandate. In addition to managing and trying the cases brought before us, we also made solid progress on each of the six strategic areas we had identified in our 2019 to 2024 strategic plan. Over the last year, in spite of the pandemic, our virtual courtroom provided uninterrupted service to our customers. We held 55 virtual court sittings and one of the cases coming before us in the original jurisdiction was initiated by a member state of CARICOM brought against another member state. This was the first time that such an action had been filed and it demonstrated a growing level of confidence in the court's role as an arbiter of disputes among CARICOM member states. Apart from its judicial work, the president shared some of the other deliverables completed by the court during the past court year. These include the finalization of judicial discipline regulations to accompany the revised Judicial Code of Conduct, which was adopted in 2020. We implemented a scheme for monitoring and evaluating our progress in accomplishing our strategic plan. And as the executing agency for the Canadian-funded Jurist Project, we supported several justice delivery initiatives across the region. We engaged in a wide range of training initiatives for judges and staff of the court. And through our partnership with bodies such as the Caribbean Association of Judicial Officers, popularly called CAJO, the CCG Academy for Law, and the Global Judicial Integrity Network, a UN agency of which I'm an advisory board member, we assisted in legal and judicial education programs, not just throughout the region, but also beyond. Of course, while we have made strides in these and other areas, we recognize that there is still more work to be done. And so, over the next judicial year, we will remain responsive and resilient. We shall continue to implement our strategic plan, paying particular regard to developing the mechanisms 
for more meaningful interaction with our stakeholders, whether through our website or through social media or by other means. The CCJ is your court, the people of the Caribbean. Justice Saunders urged citizens of the region to learn more about the court and how it serves the region. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. Asse l'année, l'année 2019 et puis l'année 2020, le gouvernement a passé deux lois pour régler cette pratique qui a concerné la santé publique. Première, un ban non, changement de loi contre les femmes. Deuxième loi, c'était pour empêcher les femmes en pièce, place publique telle que Kabawi, Ba, Westeron, Lens, Abo Transport Public, Abo Taxi, et puis en pièce place réservée pour les gens et puis débattre, n'importe quel type de transport. C'est obligation nous toutes pour connaître et puis respecter ces lois. Pour assurer la santé nous et puis protéger les nous kotwaka. Si la loi twape ou pab, et bien pièce business ou pab agit contre des lois sala. La loi ka ordonné paye en la main 5 000 dollars pour moun ki ni agi personnellement et puis 10 000 pour pièce business. C'est pour nous changer qui en tant maladie COVID-19 sala. Qui nous fume nous même, et bien mette kon nous en situation pour nous sesetam, c'est l'habitude qui dangereux pour santé nous. A nous, nous tout décidé pour faire génération sala, une génération sans fume. This is a message from the Minister of Health and Wellness, supported by Paul on this station. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur, Madame, the Department of Responsibility for Information and Government, this is the GIS, the Television National PIA NTN, Capacito Nouvelle Aquayol. Capacito. Primus Hutchinson. Les plus pauvres en cette ici en chemin pour trouver grande assistance pour sa vivre à Dayon qui est plus en condition qui est trop plus confortable qui ça il a espéré c'est à présent. De une cérémonie spéciale en cette financière après ça fait mercredi bon matin Premier ministre Onewa Philippe Jepier Ministre qui n'est pas responsable pour affaire Kai et gouvernement local, honorable Richard Frederick, ministre des Affaires égalité et justice sociale, honorable Joaque Henry, et ambassade des pays Chine-Taiwan, Peter Chen, qui a parmi plusieurs autres ministres gouvernement, Sigode Pormana, et les officiers gouvernement, qui étaient présents durant la présentation sala pour établir le programme d'assistance nationale pour Kai en pays cette ci Premier ministre Honor Philippe J. Pierre en adresse lui pour mettre pour toujours placer le peuple cette ci avant n'importe quoi. Il y a vrai que c'est raison pour assistance Kai Sala qui est venu en réalité. Premier ministre Pierre dit que pour trop longtemps, il y a 7 et 7 personnes à payer qui ont souffert en bas mauvais conditions de logement. Premier ministre là, pour mettre qui à présent, plusieurs cette ci en en tout petit côté de pays là, qui ont trouvé un grand soulagement pour ça rester à dans une condition Kai qui cette fois plus confortable que mon été avant, mais mon été à présent. Ministre là qui n'est responsable pour affaire Kai, on est avec Richard Frederick. En commissariat et puis moi, déclaré que pour ce salaire qui a coûté 4 millions de dollars américains, si l'argent pour être hors gouvernement Taïwan et principalement pour assister Kai les pauvres, mais il faut comprendre que situation mon qui pauvre, c'est un qui ni il n'y a plus l'intérêt et qui a gardé pour projet ça là adressé un bon de toi mon au lieu de cette ici. Comme ministre qui ni les pauvres à ce thème à ce conscience moi et me connaît ces qualités manières chaque cette ici qui a vivre en Kai plâché en et tout en Kai ou Kawé tout le Adam la panne finette, la porte qui a croisé. Moi, je demande au um, gouvernement de Taïwan pour quitter nos services à l'agence, pour aider les pauvres qui ont qui ka, qui ka été en bas condition, qui n'est pas bon pour nous aider à mourir et à y aller. Et qui est d'accord Et je dis à nous lancer ce programme. Le programme de ça, qui a trouvé quoi From Gozile pour descendre vieux fort, from Miku pour vivre souffrir. Tous les quatre coins en cette place, tout partout, nous kai bâti, nous kai pas bâti, mais nous kai ouanger kai les pauvres. Nous kai organiser, nous kai faire ces semaines, nous kai faire à d'autres manières. 
ko na ni accountability et transparency ko nou sa moutwe ki sa nou fè ki si l'ajan sa pou an jise ka e sa so e ka fè mwen e ka fè mwen plezi jodi ya pou nou wè dat gouvernement sa manifesto i te di yo ka mette moun pou mye e ka te program sa la si ka reli me moun avan le mam publik a se plesi ka trouve invitasyon pou mette lan men ansam e pi biwo de edikasyon sati a minister de sante se plesi pou fe divers observasyon e pe pou se divers observasyon de sante pou mwa oktob minister de safè sante e ka fe le pli go sitwaye sa se onwab mozis jabatis kouye a sou pep pe la pou chonje ki mwa oktob se pou obzove kanse antete e ko si li kat an mwa oktob se pou obzove travay le dokte yon si anonse ki li dis se semen pou obzove maladi sevel e tout di wan mwa oktob ka y aktivite an obzovans se divers maladi sala yon lot aktivite ki minis la ka gade ki twez opotan se jone etenasyonal pou le pli gwan sitwayen evek sa twez opotan pou nou Paske pou premye fwa, a de gouvetman set li si, nou mette an dipatman ki nou ka kwe an langle Elderly Affairs, ki ek se mwen ki ni wè skonsabilite pou za fè gwan moun an peyi set li si. Kou sa, lanè sa la, se kominete nasyonal la ka gade, ki manye gwan moun sa antwe an langle yo ka kwe an digital wol la. Sa vle di ki manye nou sa mette gwan moun an di dan za fè servi kompyuta, servi kompyuta, WhatsApp, Facebook, tout kalte bagay kon sa. Eve ki manye nou kay fe yo vini ansam pou se vise bagay sa la. Eve ki sa nou kay fe pou fe plieze pou gwan moun jwen se bagay sa la pou yo se vi pou pale avek ishou. Eve pou fe difon wechèch la ni gwan moun ki vle fe se bagay sa la. Eve ki minis la ka pwan jou sa la li 1er oktob lanè sa la. Kon an difon tan kon nou kay angaje gwan moun an set li si a da difon manye. Go back, right, si long, right. Si long, menis Jobatis, itu e nesese pou nou anbwase le pli gwan sitwayen paski yo travay wèd an tan avan pou plase developman abe pou plase nouvan developman set li si. Se paske se gwan moun nou travay wèd evek yo fè douvan ban nou, evek nou kay koumanse selibwe yo, evek menese moun sa di dan a dan a difon manye. Nou sa avan tout se bagay sa la nou ka obzerve an oktob, Nou ni COVID-19 la toujou. Evek dokte, evek pompye, polis, tout moun ka travay wèd an za fè COVID-19 sa la. Kon sa le nou ka gade sitiwasyon, evek nou ka obzerve se diferwan jou sa la an oktob, nou ka osi chonje se dokte a evek se moun an ki ka travay an se l'hôpital la, se moun an ki ka netwaye, ou li wan se kouch se moun an ki malade, se watchman nan, tout moun ki ka travay an za fè COVID-19 sa la. Nou ka wime si ou ek di ou nou sab se an travay ki vwed. Evek tout moun ki ka soufè, ek tout moun fami yo, adan malerezman, adan fami yo mor, evek za fè COVID-19 la, nou ka di oktob ou si se an tan, nou ka gade sa twe seriye. Kon sa, nou ka invite tout moun pou patisipe an se aktivite ya, pou sou ni an dokter, kouye dokter ou di, mwenye ou kontan yi, prede bay dokter ou, se gwan moun an kouye yo, se vwade di, li 1er oktob, se jou gwan moun internasyonal, moun ki ni difikilte e sa vel evek se bay sa la, evek za fe kanser. Se an bagay ki twe seri an sent li si, evek nou kay ou si adwesi. Minister sa fe agrikol, la pech, le fori, ek developman ti komi nan sent li si, onorab Alfred Prosper, ka ple de pou le fama fig, sa se, sa vle di kultivate fig, pou pwen ti tche, abe an tche, an timiyot pli tche toujou, kon gouvernman ka ese, kon yo pe, pou chache soulajman ba yo. Minis la fe apel sa la pwis espresman kon siklon el sa te devalize industri fig pe ya wisetman. Ankotwe, minis agrikol la deklare ki la ni plan plas pou yon delegasyon vizite l'anglite tou swit pou chen diskisyon epi se go gwek ki ka achete fig pe yinou. Nou nan ti delegasyon ki ka yon l'anglite pou vye anraje se maket lan kon Fives, kon Wait Rose, kon Salesbury ek pou nou vye Gade se nou sa fè se moun sa kontine wè lansyon e oni ek nou sent li si ek pou asi wè fama sa van fig yo ek fama sa kontine fè la an endosyo ya. Ep jos pou si men pase nou isi vè preske yon milyon dola la an sent li si pou vye 
supporter BPIP, ça c'est Banana in improve, production. production Improvement Project là. Et que nous savons, projet ça là, nous y a sous quatre années. Et que nous savons si pour un projet ça a bail, en chaque ces femmes africaines là, là ils viennent pour canal, si pour pour immigration, si pour pour um, black sugar talker, si pour pour celles like, différents chimiques. Et nous avons un programme ça va continuer. Et qui va continuer à faire des pharmacies pour les besoins, pour faire une confiance dans les besoins industriels. Moi, je sais, et je vais attendre l'année à chaque femme qui a trouvé qu'elle est frustrated. Et qui est vraiment paniqué pour continuer. Mais nous avons un gouvernement qui a fait des pharmacies, des industries pour les besoins. Et pour continuer à encourager ces gens à faire des industries. Et monsieur, mesdames. Dans ce côté, nous avons une nouvelle pour aujourd'hui. Je remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie l'invitation pour vous puis Je vous remercie pour vous la vie. Je vous remercie pour nouvelle en vous remercie pour 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 vous for the next 24 hours. Weather, partly cloudy. Hazy and breezy occasionally becoming cloudy with some scattered showers and a chance of isolated thunderstorms during the night. Seas, moderate to locally rough, with waves 5 to 8 feet or 1.5 to 2.4 meters. Moisture and instability associated with a surface trough will cause some scattered showers and possibly isolated thunderstorms over the Lesser Antilles tonight. A tropical wave located over the western tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 20 miles per hour or 31 kilometers per hour. This wave is expected to affect the Eastern Caribbean region Thursday. A second tropical wave located over the Eastern Tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norvell.